He has a casebook project he's working on right now called Hack the Casebook, where he essentially has taken publicly available cases and put them into a, a software program to make them available for students free on the internet. He reinvents uh, what it is to teach by taking the basic teaching material of the casebook and turning it into an, an open source online co-production activity for students, uh, faculty, and people beyond the walls of the school. Um, and uh, his ability to involve, therefore, anyone who's in his proximity in the projects that he's excited about is uh, extraordinary, contagious, uh, and terrific. Uh, I've been going through a process of trying to look at ways to take the legal texts in a classroom that people pay $200 for a casebook, even though the cases inside are owned by the American public, they're public domain, but the casebook is still $200, and they have to haul these things around, and they can't easily annotate them, they only have you know, marginalia, um, and they are edited. Each case, each opinion in the book that they read that represents a judge saying something has been edited down, which necessarily makes it a little fragmented. There's a reason the judge wrote longer, but you can't give students and have enough progress lengthy opinions. So I came up with uh, a platform that lets you look at the cases and the full text is there. And that really transforms reading for class. And because it's all online and digital and free, students don't pay anything for it, that tends to make them happy. But it also means just when we're gathered in class, I can have up behind me on a huge screen a case and a student says, well, I think this reminds me of the case of Catco versus Briney. We just call it right up and there it is. You say, well, what section, what paragraph are you talking about that you think lends support to your claim? And then we'll read the paragraph together and everybody can be front and center looking at each other and at the front of the room rather than buried in a book flipping pages around. And that small tweak totally um, prosaic makes a huge difference in the operation of a class that I'd been teaching for a few years and had gotten into a good rhythm, but now it's in a much better one. And we actually surveyed the students. It's good to have some both qualitative and quantitative feedback. They really like it. One thing that was different about the Hack the Casebook project is that whereas in class we came in having done the readings that he had asked us to read and then we would talk about those for the day um, and so we would have control over the conversation but the agenda would already be set. I felt like on the Hack the Casebook project even the agenda was open, um, that he was interested in hearing what we had to say about how we could structure the course and, and how we could structure even a day uh, worth of materials and not just saying, all right, we're talking about this particular discrete thing in the order that I've said we're going to talk about it. And so uh, I think, yeah, we just, it was really an even more wide open conversation. And, and of course, the system I was talking about makes it easier to swap in and out new material. The casebook elements are arranged in what we call playlists, and it's like a song playlist. You listen to one song and then you listen to the other, and there are DJs who try to give you the right sequence. and my hope is it will facilitate other teachers to take a playlist from uh, a first teacher and then adapt it, change it, swap something in. And then maybe the first teacher will take that adapted one back and we'll end up with an evolution of teaching materials and subjects that ultimately, through a mediated system, will let the system be able to tell teachers and classes, just so you know, this case that you're reading here, or this text that you're reading here, there's a class in Singapore at the National University there reading the same text due the same day. Would you like to ask a question that would go to both classes and each student will answer and then have his or her answer critiqued by a student from the other class? And to be able to introduce that element to realize that what you're reading isn't happening in a vacuum, but that there are others around the world taking up the problems raised by a text, maybe from a very different perspective, that's a hope of making teaching four-dimensional, really taking it beyond just the people who happen to be in that room and over a course of a term may get to sort of know where individual members of the class tend to stand.
Thank <laughs> you.